this is somaya working as assistant professor in the department of mechanical engineering welcome back to the course of fluid mechanics and hydraulic machinery so in the previous uh, classes we have gone through the introduction to the pelton uh, wheel turbine and uh, how to uh, find out the uh, force and work done for uh, a jet whenever it is striking at one of the end of a at one of the tip of a curved vane <clears throat> now based on uh, the pelton wheel turbine uh, design where uh, the shape of the bucket uh, used for pelton wheel turbine we will uh, we'll, uh, find out the working proportions are work done and uh, power developed by the turbine for a pelton wheel So actually, the Pelton wheel turbine is uh, named after a leather uh, Pelton. So uh, it's named after uh, 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 the Pelton wheel turbine uh, in the 1880. Leather uh, Pelton uh, who invented, and uh, it can be classified uh, according to the uh, different classific uh, classifications we have seen in the previous uh, class, uh, like uh, in uh, based on head, it is a high head and uh, type of based on available energy at the inlet before hitting the turbine is impulse and based on specific speed it is low specific speed turbine and according to the direction of flow through the runner is tangential flow turbine it can be classified like this the runner consists of a circular disc with a number of uh, buckets uh, evenly spaced uh, uh, over its periphery so this uh, skeleton can uh, in the skeleton we can see the, how the buckets are uh, placed and uh, what is the condition for minimum number of buckets uh, etc so there is an empirical relation uh, to uh, determine the number of buckets uh, to be accommodated on a periphery of a runner of the pelton wheel turbine is uh, d by 2d plus 15 d by 2d plus 15 here uh, 15 is the minimum number and D is the uh, diameter of a turbine ro or rotor or pitch, uh, pitch diameter and D is a jet diameter and uh, there is a uh, uh, sphere wall to regulate the amount of flow rate onto the turbine based on the requirement and there is a pen, uh, pen stock so the pen stock carries the water from reservoir to the turbine <coughs> Here, yeah, the buckets have shape uh, double ME ellipsoidal and uh, two uh, actually there is a splitter that will be splitting the jet into two halves so that uh, axial thrust becomes neutralized and the maximum amount of energy uh, can be uh, utilized by the bucket uh, so in order to utilize the consume the maximum energy possessed by the water uh, so there is a uh, double ME ellipsoid. So the this is a, a cross section of a bucket here. We can see uh, all uh, the double ME ellipsoid is uh, <coughs> drawn and various parameters and various uh, <coughs> notations how to uh, understand uh, the uh, nomenclature of a, a bucket of a Pelton wheel turbine. <coughs> here <coughs> B is a width of a bucket. B is capital B indicates the width of a bucket and uh, capital L indicates the total height of the bucket so from year to year <coughs> the small L is the half of the height of the bucket from here uh, to the center of the, the bucket and uh, capital M indicates the width of a notch so there is a at the end of a bucket there is notch this indicates M denoted by M so this is the top of a plan, the top V of A, the cross section of the bucket. So whenever <coughs> the jet is striking on the splitter, so this is a splitter, the jet has to strike on the splitter so that it will be divided into two equal halves so that uh, uh, there will not be any imbalance uh, in order to and uh, consume more uh, energy possessed by the water also. So there will be two halves. So now there is a 
the angle of deflection in the previous class so we have uh, gone through the angle of deflection is about 160 degrees to 170 degrees the angle of deflection means uh, whenever this vr2 is extended over a uh, turbine bucket on to the center which is extended from a splitter so the outer angle between these two lines is known as angle of deflection and the jet is applied on the splitter therefore the only horizontal line at inlet the velocity triangle is a straight line at inlet inlet to the belt and weld turbine as it is splitting on the splitter as it is impacting the splitter the the splitter jet will becoming two halves one half will be passing like another half will be like this therefore inlet velocity triangle is a straight line and the line length is equals to a jet velocity inlet jet velocity v1 so this is v1 and uh, <clears throat> so this is due to this v1 there is a movement uh, there is uh, the movement in uh, blade velo uh, blade velocity will be going to occur so that is denoted by u1 from year to year so u1 is a to b v1 and a to c is v1 so the relation between the difference between v1 and uh, u1 is v uh, r1 relative velocity will be existing so with which the jet strikes so now i got uh, three velocity uh, components so if it is an inlet velocity triangle i should have placed uh, uh see uh, differently but uh, here inlet velocity triangle is a straight line on straight line only we have to identify all these parameters and uh, vw1 is equals to uh, v1 uh, so while velocity at inlet so vw1 uh, and all velocity components would have but uh, here there are no jet angle alpha is not there and theta is zero then only these are aligning horizontally these two becomes a zero so after reading after plotting the inlet velocity triangle as a straight line i identifying the various velocity parameters and now we will see how to identify or how to draw outlet velocity triangle for a belt and weld turbine <coughs> so the belt and weld turbine is double hemi ellipsoidal so therefore at the exit we will have vr2 and v2 uh, so jet velocity your v1 it will be reduced and therefore v2 will be plotted like this and due to v2 there will be u2 so due to these uh, two uh, velocity blade velocity and jet velocity there will be relative velocity because of these two velocity we are two so the uh, phi is outlet uh, blade angle so outlet blade angle means the, the angle between we are two and u2 is we are uh, angle phi and uh, the if you divide uh, resolve, resolve the components so we, we this one this uh, uh, vr2 can be resolved into horizontal and vertical components like this otherwise after <coughs> once uh, v2 is known so this uh, line v2 can be resolved into horizontal and vertical components then i will have a flow velocity at outlet and while velocity at outlet so this is the outlet velocity triangle and beta is the angle between outlet jet velocity and vw2 while velocity at outlet so this is outlet jet angle beta is outlet jet angle so now once uh, these uh, angles are known and uh, v1 uh, u1 and uh, here also <coughs> the velocity proportions and angles etc uh, if uh, few are known the remaining can be calculated by using the phi and beta angles etc then we can calculate the force uh, what is the force generated and uh, what is the uh, work done etc it uh, h equals to net head acting on a belt and wheel so h is hg minus hf so gross head uh, uh, neglected uh, from there uh, loss of it due to friction um, frictional losses Okay, HF is 4 FLV square by 2 GD, where D is die of instruct or die of wheel. So, based on the calculation, <coughs> if the loss of head due to during the penstock while the liquid is traveling through the penstock, we can use the die of penstock. Now, D is the die of jet with which it is striking the rotor, n equals to the speed of the wheel in RPM. 
then v1 equals to uh, root 2gh u1 and u2 is uh, blade velocity is 5d n by 60 so these are some of the relations we have to remember now from the inlet uh, velocity triangle otherwise from inlet uh, straight line the velocity triangle is a straight line the uh, vr1 is equals to from this point vr1 is equals to v1 minus u1 so v1 minus u1 u1 equals to u2 equals to u only therefore v1 minus u and vw1 uh, from this uh, straight line we can see vw1 is equals to v1 so that's why we have it uh, like this and alpha is 0 theta also 0 that's why uh, the velocity triangle has become a straight line from the velocity triangle at outlet vr2 is equals to vr1 so th this uh, assumption we have to consider vr1 equals to vr2 u1 equals to u2 and uh, from the outlet velocity triangle vw2 is equals to vr2 cos phi minus u2 because vr2 cos phi is nothing but so from the outlet velocity triangle vr2 cos phi is equals to u2 plus vw2 so from this i need vw2 vw2 is equals to u2 minus vr2 cos phi vr2 cos phi minus u2 so yeah vw2 it becomes vr2 cos phi minus u2 from velocity uh, from outlet velocity triangle so once uh, the while velocities are known while velocity at inlet and outlet these two velocities are known and these are responsible for the development of work by a, a, a jet on a blade otherwise the uh, work done by a, a rotor or blade so these velocities are known vw2 vw1 is known and vr2 vr1 is also both are equal and uh, these are equals to v1 these two are equals to v1 so then we will calculate uh, fx as we have discussed in the previous class the derivation for fx is rate the force applied by a jet on your vane is equals to rate of change of momentum so rate of change of momentum is uh, the mass for time into inlet velocity minus final velocity rate of change of momentum so again mass is nothing but uh, density into the volume therefore rho a v1 here rho a v1 and vw1 plus vw2 is the outlet velocity and inlet velocity so fx in the di uh, fx is the force applied by a jet in the direction of x is rho a v1 into vw1 plus vw2 so as angle beta is an acute angle uh, less than 90 degrees then positive sign is considered that's why we have taken vw1 plus vw2 also this is a case of series of veins so the mass of uh, the water striking is rho a v1 and not uh, rho a vr1 in equation 1 so because we have to consider v v r v r one is v one minus u one but here the striking is due to v one that's why we are considering a v one so rho a v one so area of jet is pi by four d square so now work done by the jet on runner per second is f x into u so force into a distance moved by a blade rho a v one into v w one v plus v w two into u is the work done so here plus is due to as beta is less than 90 if beta equals to 90 then we there will, will be no vw2 component if it is greater than 90 then it becomes vw1 minus vw2 similarly power given to the runner by the jet is so work done per second work done per second is power the, therefore already we know the work done Work done is uh, work done per second is here rho a v1 vw1 plus vw2 into u is the work done per second. So if I need it in kilowatts by thousand, so the same expression by thousand is a uh, power in kilowatts. So this is the work uh, work done by a uh, Pelton wheel turbine and the power developed by the uh, rotor 
वर्क डन पर सेकेंड फॉर यूनिट वेट ऑफ वाटर स्ट्राइकिंग फॉर सेकेंड फॉर यूनिट वेट मीन्स स्पेसिफिक वेट इन टू वैल्यू सो स्पेसिफिक वेट वेट ऑफ वाटर इज नथिंग बट स्पेसिफिक वेट इन टू वैल्यू देर फॉर रोज इन टू ये वी वन ऑलरेडी वी नो द वर्क डन फॉर सेकेंड वर्क डन फॉर सेकेंड इज नोन सो फॉर यूनिट वेट फॉर वेट ऑफ वाटर फॉर सेकेंड Okay, after simplification, we will get one by g into v w one uh, plus r minus v w two r plus v w two if beta is less than n into u newton meter per newton. The energy supplied to the jet uh, at inlet is in the form of kinetic energy. So, because the entire uh, energy possessed by the water can be converted uh, into only kinetic energy with the insertion of uh, only that uh, converging nozzle. so therefore inlet uh, at inlet uh, before entering into the turbine the available energy is only kinetic energy of mv 1 square of m v 1 square so m is density into volume therefore of rho a v 1 into v 1 square of rho a v 1 into v 1 square so this is the inlet inlet energy available energy at inlet so output by input is work done per second by kinetic energy per second so we know our work done per second is rho a v1 into vw1 plus vw2 into u by half rho a v1 into v1 square so from this we will get uh, 2 into vw1 plus vw2 into u by v1 square so this is the hydraulic efficiency of a turbine hydraulic efficiency is work done by the uh, turbine to the work given to the turbine the ratio of these two some of the working proportions uh, for solving the problems in peldenville turbine is the ideal velocity is known as uh, uh, spouting velocity is equals to root 2gh under consideration is our actual velocity of the jet is slightly less uh, due to the frictional losses in the nozzle therefore the, this is equals to v equals to cv into uh, root 2gh where cv or kv is the coefficient of velocity for the nozzle So value ranging from 0.97 to 0.99. So uh, where capital H is the net head on a turbine. <coughs> As obtained earlier, for maximum hydraulic efficiency, velocity of uh, wheel, velocity of wheel is u at pitch circle is equal to 0.5 times of v. Now, however, in actual practice, the maximum efficiency occurs at uh, when v u is 0.46 times of v. <clears throat> and moreover it is uh, convenient to express u in terms of h therefore u equals to phi into root 2gh u equals to another uh, relation is u equals to phi into root 2gh and uh, previously we have seen v equals to cv into root 2gh <clears throat> and uh, here the speed ratio of phi speed ratio of phi varies from 0.43 to 48 Angle through which uh, jet of water gets uh, deflected is 165 degrees unless otherwise it is stated. While solving the problem, which the angle of deflection is not provided, it can be taken as 165 degrees. The mean diameter or pitch uh, pitch diameter of a Pelton wheel uh, may be obtained using u equals to phi d n by 60. We know is a blade velocity. U is equals to phi d n by 60. D is the diameter of a A rotor or pitch diameter. N is the RPM of a rotor. So from this we can calculate d is 60 into u by phi n. The ratio of the pitch diameter d to the jet diameter d uh, small d uh, d by d. So is known as m. M is jet ratio. M is known as jet ratio. Jet ratio is small m equals to capital D by d. So for maximum efficiency, jet ratio should be 11 to 14. Normally, a jet ratio is fixed at 12. Next, a smaller value of M results in uh, too close a spacing of buckets or too few buckets for the whole jet uh, to be used. A larger value of M results in a more bulky installation. However, in extreme cases, a value of M as as low as 7, as as 110. Has been used. So some of the main dimensions of the bucket of Pelton wheel, so will be uh, seen in the following diagram. So, but in this diagram, we can see B equals to 
So what is B? Capital B. B is the width of a bucket. So this empirical relation is uh, four to five times of uh, jet diameter. What is jet diameter? The incoming. Uh, uh, the after uh, through the nozzle, the jet diameter is small d, but uh, capital D is the diameter of a bucket. So, diam pitch diameter of a rotor, the rotor diameter is capital D, but the small d is jet diameter. So, L is the height of the bucket that is equals to 2.4 to 3.2 times of uh, jet diameter. Similarly, C is equals to 0.81 to 1.05 times of uh, D. C is this one, so this uh, the width of bucket. Here in this section, we can see what is C, and uh, a small l is 1.2 to 1.9 times of D. Here we can see small l, and uh, capital uh, L is uh, the total height that is 2.4 to 3.2 times, and uh, M, M is width of the notch at the exit. M, M can be 1.12. 1.25 times of D and 5 will be 10 degrees to 20 degrees. So similarly, so B1 is 5 to, so here B1 is 5 to 8 degrees. Here 5 will be 10 to 20 degrees. These are some of the empirical relations we can uh, utilize for solving of uh, problems based on Pelton wheel turbine. So the number of buckets on a Pelton wheel turbine minimum of 14 and there is a relation so by, based on this relation we can uh, uh, accommodate a number of buckets so 15 is minimum number and d by 2d so d, d by d is a small m jet ratio m so therefore 0.5 times of m plus 15 so value is ranging from 16 to 35 so in this uh, problem we can see the Pelton wheel uh, has designed for following data power to be developed is 600 kilowatt or 6 megawatts. Net available head is 300 meter H. So, this is H uh, and the power is given uh, by power developed. Uh, this is a required power 6000 uh, kilowatts and speed n equals to 550 rpm ratio of jet diameter to wheel diameter 1 by 10 and uh, overall efficiency is 85 percent. Find the number of jets. Diameter object, diameter of wheel, and the quantity of water required. So, CV equals to uh, not provided, that is uh, in between 0.972999, therefore, CV equals to 0.98, we can consider. And phi is 0.46, this also we can take if it is not provided. And uh, V equals to CV root 2 GH, so this relation we have seen as U equals to phi root 2 GH, so we can calculate. The velocity is 75.19 uh, uh, meter per second because h is given h is known root 2 yes cv is considered and similarly u equals to 35.29 uh, remaining parameters are there and from the overall efficiency overall efficiency equals to the uh, output power the output by input the output is uh, the power developed by the turbine p is uh, 60 uh, 6 megawatts or 6000 6, kilowatts by input power is rho g q h rho g is 9810 q h the q is the amount of quantity of water uh, is to be supplied so the quantity is 2.399 meter q per second so this is the q answer for q and similarly so diameter of a rotor can be calculated by using u equals to pi dn by 16 here uh, we, uh, we know u and uh, n etc. So from this uh, the diameter is 1.225 meters. Similarly, small d by uh, capital D is 1 by 10. So I yeah, you know capital D. You, therefore, you can calculate a small d is equals to 122.5 mm. So area of uh, jet uh, is 5 by 4 d square. Um, uh, because uh, small, small d is 0.1225 and uh, jet area, total jet area required is q by v where q is uh, 2.399 and uh, v is 75.19. So therefore, uh, I get uh, the total area is 0 0.0319. So number of jets required will be the ratio of 0 0.0319 total area is this one. And the area of single jet, area of single jet is 
0.0118. So from this uh, ratio, you will get a number of jets required is 3. So this is uh, whether the close to the given value, whether the obtained value is correct or not, uh, we can uh, do, uh, do it again. So uh, you can calculate the D uh, because A equals to, here we can calculate uh, A is 5 by 4 D square. So this is uh, whether all these proportions are correct or not. Here we can calculate the small d is 116 uh, and the small d by capital D is uh, again uh, 1 by 10.52 is uh, therefore correct. So therefore the given value is correct. These are the proportions. These are the references. Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.